Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this to this public meeting of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. We have one item on the agenda this morning and that is a decisional matter on the CPSC FY 2020 performance budget request to Congress. Um, at this time, um, I'd like to entertain a motion if anyone has one with regards to um, deferring or delaying this uh, particular hearing. There's been some conversation that it may make sense to defer this either to a later hour today or tomorrow morning, uh, depending if schedules allow. So I'll entertain a motion if anyone has one, and if not, then we will proceed as, uh, as planned. Okay, hearing no motions, uh, then we will continue as planned. Um, I will begin just by saying it's highly unusual for us to be holding a public hearing on our budget request, which is classified as for official use only until the president submits it to the Congress next week. With that in mind, Melissa Hampshire, the acting general counsel this week, has provided all of us with guidance regarding this morning's hearing. I would ask Melissa to closely monitor the hearing to avoid any uh, digressions. Since we are limited in what we, can, uh, what we are able to discuss publicly, essentially we are here to discuss the commissioner's amendments and staff proposals, to staff proposals, and not the underlying proposal itself. Before we turn to those amendments, if anyone has any questions for staff, we can bring Mr. Jay Hoffman, Mr. Baker to the table, and they are at the table already. It's my understanding, and let me ex just tell you how much I appreciate the fact that uh, both your offices as well as OEX and general counsel have really spent an inordinate amount of time in the commission offices helping to prepare each commissioner for today's hearing. So um, I do want to express my appreciation uh, for that. Um, so I, at this time, I will open it up to questions from the commissioners. I do not have any questions, Commissioner Adler. So, uh, Madam Chairman, I did want to put in a motion, and I think this is the appropriate point to do that. Uh, in light of where the budget document is at this point, I think, which is the point of submission to the Congress, uh, I feel no need to have an FOUO designation on the uh, budget document, and I realize that's uh, something that's exceptional, but this will be done for a narrow purpose, so I would like to move that we lift the FOUO designation from the package and discuss it in a uh, public session. Is there a second? Commissioner Adler, I'll recognize you for your motion and ask you to describe it. You have up to three minutes to describe it, and then after the conclusion, uh, I'm sorry, you already did. Um, so once it's been seconded, which it has been, we will move to consideration of Commissioner Adler's motion. Uh, so I really don't have much to add other than I've looked at all the controlling authorities about whether we must have an FOUO designation for the package, and at this point I don't believe that we do. And so uh, at least for purposes of this one discussion on this one budget document, uh, I would again urge my colleagues to vote to lift the FOUO designation. So at this time, uh, each commissioner will have the opportunity to question the sponsor of the uh, a motion, and I will begin the line of questioning. So I guess my question to Commissioner Adler is, has this ever happened before that the uh, agency on an FUO, uh, FUO, FOUO, FOUO budget, uh, that we have re lifted that designation to the budget? Well, thank you for asking that. Now I get to go into my memory banks, and I will just tell you, back in the day when the commission uh, was addressing budget documents, we had all of our meetings in open and public deliberation. I'm sorry, the, and I should have explained this. I'll ask my questions. We'll go around the dais with questions, and then at the end we'll give you the opportunity. Uh, my concern with regards to this is we've received a very clear guidance from OMB that their preference to this agency is that we do not have... Um, an open meeting that this is an FUO uh, UO budget and I, I guess I would ask you to consider that in in the decision in this motion to uh, to open this hearing and waive the designation uh, has that ever been done before and um, I guess my last and question if, go ahead. would be um, is there a concern by uh, defying what OMB's guidance to this agency is that we would um, number one set an unpleasant precedent and number two uh, be, um, I think, uh, jeopardizing the agency and the position of the agency and our relationship with OMB. 
Well, uh, again, thank you for that. Uh, and I will say a couple of things. First of all, uh, this agency, unlike some other agencies, has a provision called 27K, which gives us more independence in terms of submitting our budget and requiring us to submit it simultaneously to the Congress. And there's language in 27K that says, when, at least when it comes to legislation, that we are not required to get pre-approval uh, from any, any outside uh, entity. But I do want to underscore your concern about uh, being harmonious with OMB, and I think to the extent uh, anybody from OMB watching this discussion would be concerned, I think their concerns uh, are, are not going to be terribly uh, raised or met because I think what they'll find is that this is a very narrow uh, focus of our discussion. But uh, I do think that uh, there's ample precedent in history. Uh, as I say, back in the day, the Commission had all of its deliberations about the budget with similar guidance from OMB, I should add, where the Commission actually deliberated and voted on the uh, budget in its entirety in public. I just want to reclaim my time, and then uh, I'll ask Commissioner um, Kay if he has any questions. And uh, to that point that this has happened and, and there's a lot of precedence for this, I am not certain about that, and I think that is something we should understand because in at least in recent history, there has been no precedent that this budget document would be open, that, this, that the designation would be waived, and that we would have an open hearing on this topic. In fact, a public hearing, whether or not the document is, um, if the security is waived or not, um, this has never happened, and I've been here six years now, Back in the day, I don't know that, but I know in most recent history, there is no record of this ever happening. Commissioner Akay, do you have any questions for Commissioner Adler? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to Commissioner Adler for offering this. And could, Commissioner Adler, could you just um, maybe expand a little bit on the practice that did occur and what that time period was, if, to the extent that you remember that, please? Uh, yeah, again, we had similar uh, guidance from... Uh, uh, OMB in ba back in those days, but in light of the Sunshine Act and in light of the Commission's independence and the strong language that was contained in 27K, the Commission uh, on an ongoing basis year after year would have uh, open deliberations to the point where uh, we would say, you'd see people saying, I'll give you $20,000 for this project if you'll give me an advance expert bid, 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 sorry, if you'll give me three extra FTEs on that. Uh, I'm not sure that was a, a prettier site than this, and as I say, I'm perfectly comfortable trying to stay within the spirit of OMB guidance. I think this is a unique situation, uh, prompted in part by my concern that when you, the chairman, gave your remarks at ICFASO about uh, furniture tip over, I think too many people uh, took that as official commission policy uh, and uh, it was done in a public setting and I feel that uh, we need to have an equally public discussion about whether that is the official policy of the commission. Uh, so I think it's important that we have this discussion at least uh, today on this budget. Thank you. Um, I, I do agree with the chair that this has not been the practice in the time that I've been at the agency. But clearly, it used to be, according to your recollection, do you have some sense of when it changed, when it went from the process you're describing to the process that we have been following the last seven years? So I left the commission for a period of 25 years. It changed sometime after I left. Thank you. Um, it is n it's not an easy thing to go ahead in my mind and to waive the FOUO. Designation, as a general matter, I will say one thing that I do find compelling in this particular circumstance is that it happens to be as a factual matter that the president released his top line budget numbers on Monday. And so we are, even if our agency's specific numbers were not released, the budget itself has already been publicly disclosed and that does bear on my thought process in this. Uh, no other questions for the commissioner at this time. No, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Commissioner uh, Biakwa. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Adler, thank you for bringing this motion. I, I can think of nothing that should be more publicly disclosed than how the agency is going to spend whatever money, whatever taxpayer money that OMB and the president decide to provide the agency uh, to carry out its mission. So I do agree that this should be um, public. I also 
don't see the concerns as strongly as maybe some others do. I've compared the last three years, including this year's proposed public document, and they're almost word for word, with the exception of a few pages and a few numbers here and there. So I, I don't think that this is going to be any big surprise. And I don't think the OMB guidance applies here. In fact, not only is it guidance, but it does specifically say certain agencies headed by a collegial body are required to hold their meetings open to public observation unless the agency properly determines that the matter to be discussed warrants the closing of these meetings and so on and so forth. I, I, I see no reason that the uh, how we're going to be using taxpayer dollars should be closed. And finally, whether it's been done before, um, I appreciate the precedent, but one of the frustrations I've had being someone new to the agency is that I hear that a lot. Well, this We're going to do it this way because this is the way the agency has always done it. And while that is good in many instances, the, um, it's, it's not lost on me that the world has changed, the consumer products have changed, and that best practices constantly evolve. So that, to me, is not a basis to keep things designated confidential that, in my opinion, should be dis discussed publicly. So thank you, Commissioner Adler, and I would support that motion. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you. Um, as has been mentioned, it feels like we are in a bit of an unusual situation today. This is the first time that I've had to uh, meet as a member of a collegial body to discuss in, 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 in public a, a budget request like this. But listening to the conversation today and taking a look at how the agency decision-making procedures and directives uh, speak to this situation, um, it would seem to me that that there's no treatment within the DMPs or, or, or any commission directive to um, treat internal budget documents as privileged. Perhaps that is something that we might want to take a look at. Um, but under the DMPs, it would seem to me, um, in, in terms of a, a straight reading there, that Commissioner Adler is absolutely within his rights to request a decisional instead of how we have normally treated um, this budget process, uh, voting on a budget request internally via via ballot behind closed doors. Um, I think all of us, when it, it, at some point in, in getting here, um, have spoken to uh, a, a commitment to agency transparency uh, and and to do everything that we can to operate this agency uh, in in in. in the open sunshine. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think that leaves us in, a, in an awkward situation where we are here today to talk about amendments to an underlying document that's marked FOUO, um, and it it, it 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 seems that not lifting the FOU designation at this point uh, would would not serve the underlying goal of full transparency. Therefore, I, I am inclined to support Commissioner Adler's um, motion here. Um, but I, I want to respect CPSC's role as an independent agency and to preserve the relationship and the deal that was cut with OMB with respect to uh, the, 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 the budget number that, that, that's in front of us today. Um, I, I'm inclined to support your motion, as I said, uh, but I, I do want to respect that we not dive into specific conversations about um, negotiations with the uh, with, with OMB over the the pass back amount, um, and to the extent that we're entertaining amendments here, uh, I think it's critical that we uh, do so with an eye towards preserving the agreed upon limit that that, that exists that 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 that's set out there. I think uh, you know reorganizing certain priorities within um, you know w w within the agreed upon limit uh, w would be appropriate. I think that's consistent with uh, the guidance that OMB sets out in Circular A-11. Um, so uh, th th those are my thoughts. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Um, I just have a couple more questions about your motion, Commissioner Adler. Um, I guess. Again, I'll reiterate my concern, and, and um, some of my colleagues have addressed it, but I feel that we are in defiance of OMB and that we are disregarding their guidance to us. Yes, we are an independent regulatory agency, but I value the relationship with OMB, 
and there is a process. And from what I'm hearing from this dais this morning, there's some confusion as to what the purpose of this budget is, which is to finance this agency, versus what our operating plan is, and that is how we use those monies and how we designate those monies. And that historically, and I do agree with Commissioner Kay on that issue being public, and, and that has historically always been a very, very, very public discussion about how this agency will use its money, how we will move our FTEs around, how we will take what OMB has given us, and how we will implement that money. This is a part of a process here, and we are just, I think, putting a stick in the eye of OMB and defying what, they, what the guidance is to us and saying, your process be darn, and we will and we will proceed as we see fit, not as you see fit. And I am very concerned about what that does to, to our relationship with OMB, which heretofore, I think, has been very good. And I've appealed the last two budgets, and, and both of those budgets have come back with a higher number. So I have grave concerns about that, and I'd like you to address those issues. Well, thank you very much, and I uh, would uh, challenge the premise of your statement, which is that it's defying uh, OMB. I think what we're doing is carrying out a strong congressional mandate that applies to this agency as embodied in Section 27K. And I think, as I say, anybody from OMB watching the discussion today, I think they would find themselves uh, not in the least concerned about the dis discussion we have. And I think that uh, Commissioner Feldman putting a boundary about what the discussion is going to be makes exact perfect sense to me. So uh, I do think that uh, we're perfectly appropriate at this point in lifting the FOUO uh, designation. And I think, as I say, at the end of the discussion, uh, anybody from OMB would probably have a big yawn about any defiance of them. Uh, but this is also carrying out our mandate uh, under the Sunshine Act and under the uh, transparency approach this agency's always taken to have at least a limited discussion about some of the issues in the budget. And, and reclaiming my time, I'd like to just talk a minute about the apparent confusion about the role of the budget and financing this agency versus the role of the operating plan and where that is the appropriate forum to get into these kinds of discussions. If you could comment on that. Yeah, uh, so uh, speaking as a commissioner and not as the chairman, there are only a few points uh, in a given fiscal year when we get to put in concrete proposals. Uh, one of those is the budget, one of them is the operating plan, one of them, of them is the mid-year review. To cut us off from putting in substantive proposals into the budget, uh, rather than in putting those into the op plan, it makes no sense to me. There, there will be follow-up, I think, from all of us to the op plan and in mid-year review. But I'd like I'd to reclaim my time. I believe the, the time for us to have inserted our thoughts and our wishes was in, the septem was in September when we submitted our budget to OMB. Not now. That, the ship has sailed. Well, again, reclaiming whether I have any time or not, uh, what makes this unique, I repeat, is that uh, when the chairman gave a speech to ICFASO, one of the things you did was to lay out, I thought, a very thoughtful approach on furniture tip over, but that was done in a very public setting, and I had no advance notice about what was going to be said. Reclaiming let me, my let me time. finish if I, I might. I uh, and so uh, I think we need to have a, uh, at least as public a discussion about what our policy is going to be on furniture tip over here as, we di as was done at IFSO. And I will just say that uh, I believe that you, as acting chairman and Commissioner Kay, both understand the. Um, what cha the chair, uh, that, is the, that is the speech we give at ICFASO. It is uh, an opportunity not to for me to outline the agency's policy, but for me to outline my priorities and what I think this agency should be focused on, which we will continue to do in the operating plan, and that is the topic of tip overs, which we consider to be one of the top hazards that we deal with in this agency. So uh, I have every right to do that. I never once said it was the policy of this commission, but rather it was my own views. Commissioner Kay. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, you're correct. I sat in your seat, and so I completely understand your frustrations, uh, and I'll just reiterate that what makes this unique for me in this instance is just that the budget has already been released, and again, I understand our, our number has not been released, but I do think that that has factually changed uh, the analysis for me. 
Um, and so, but everything else you're talking about and the, the wanting to respect certain relationships and how we've done things and certainly uh, the prerogatives of the chair, I completely agree with. I would only push back a teeny bit gently on the idea of including substance at this stage. I recognize that that's not ideal, uh, but I do think we, first of all, have at least one new commissioner from when we did it last time, or at least Commission 2. Well, I think you might have been here at the, when we did the September one, but certainly in terms of onboarding and people understanding. And so it might be that we are uh, a little bit earlier in the game next budget cycle, but I do think, considering where we all are right now, that it's certainly uh, important that we have a chance to air these issues, as Commissioner Adler mentioned. But I have no further questions for him. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Bioko. No further questions, thank you. Commissioner Feldman? No further questions, thanks. Having heard no further discussions, we'll move to vote on the motion. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Kay? Aye. Commissioner Bialco? Aye. Commissioner Feldman? Aye. And I vote no. The yeas are four, the nays are one. The commissioner, excuse me, the motion by Commissioner Adler is adopted. I think at this point we will now turn to any um, uh, amendments that the commissioners may have with regards to the uh, FY 2020 budget. Um, and I believe we will begin with Mr. Commissioner Kay. I will recognize you for your amendment. I will ask you to describe it up for to three minutes and after conclusion of that I will ask for a second. Commissioner Kay, you can proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll just keep it simple. And even though we did waive the designation, I think maybe by habit I'll probably still speak more at a higher level anyway. Uh, the purpose of my amendment is to adjust the top line of our budget request and in a, in a manner that would uh, go upward and I think reflect really the bare minimum of what this agency knows it needs, and I think that's important to emphasize, what we know we need to be effective on the hazards in front of us and the hazards, hazards that are coming. Um, we have spent many years trying to work within the framework of how the back and forth occurs with OMB, and we did that certainly during my predecessor's time, both of my predecessor's times that I witnessed my time and your time, and unfortunately, I just don't think that we are having success with that. And I do view the number, sadly, that we get from OMB, despite best efforts from our staff and the OMB staff, I do think that that has become an anchor for us that has an impact on the Hill. And though we hope always that there would be potentially some deviation upward from the Hill, it seems we're stuck in this space. And we also know as a matter of how we've been funded that it is eroding our ability to meet our core functions. And every year that we don't keep pace with inflation and we aren't able to keep pace with costs, we are able to do less and less for the American people on things that we both know about now and will learn about. And I think that because we are an independent agency, we can respectfully disagree with uh, the Office of Management and Budget and put forth a number to the United States Congress that is more reflective of what would be needed to be done to serve the American public. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Uh, is there a second? Second. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of Commissioner Kay's amendment. Uh, for discussion of the amendment, I will recognize each commissioner in the usual seniority order, except for that I will call upon the amendment sponsor last. Commissioners may ask questions of the sponsor if they wish, they may yield part of their time to the sponsor if an immediate answer is needed. Uh, each commissioner will have five minutes for discussion of the amendment. So um, I guess I have more of a comment than a question. Um, and while I, of course, welcome a higher appropriation from Congress, I, I see this amendment as really uh, not necessary today. I think today's proposal is to outline how uh, we would allocate resources if we are funded at the level of the president's budget. It does not prevent Congress from giving us more or from, for us advocating for more from the Hill. And I think that the appendix included in our underlying document is very clear. 
uh, it highlights what the unfunded priorities for this agency are, and it signals to everyone, loud and clear, that we can always use more money. I've been very vocal on that issue, and um, thus I have appealed to OMB twice and to budgets that I've received from them. I've made appeals that we need more money just to keep current with the f inflation. Um, however, I just don't think at this point this amendment is necessary, although conceptually, and I don't think it's any kind of a mystery, I do support a higher appropriation number for this agency. Commissioner Adler, I'm sorry, yeah, Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I wholly support the notion contained in the amendment, uh, and I want to go out of my way again to thank the Chairman for her vigorous, lonely, courageous efforts to get more money for this agency. I think you've been successful and a lot of other agencies and departments have been woefully unsuccessful and I attribute a, lo a lot of that to your, your skill and your friendships that you've formed uh, around the government. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we need extra funding. There's no doubt in my mind that we probably need funding even beyond what Commissioner Kay has requested. And this is one of those where I really do lie awake at night fretting about what the proper approach would be because uh, to me, at some point, this does feel like uh, the point you were making about the amendment I put in earlier, that uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an important gesture. I would hope that Commissioner Kay would write a vigorous uh, dissent to any vote that we take. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm conflicted about whether I want to, to vote for it. In other words, whether my voting for this amendment would add the slightest until a bit of a hint of extra oomph to getting a higher budget for us. If I thought that it would, I would uh, immediately and wholeheartedly support it. But at least at this point, I've got uh, many of the same reservations that you've expressed, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Adler. Commissioner Bianco. Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner Kaye, for this um, proposed amendment. I, too, uh, I'm glad you brought this to, uh, to us for consideration. I think that um, asking for an additional amount of money is never a bad thing. I also have the same reservations that Commissioner Adler does about, at this point, asking for a specific number. Um, I don't know that we would be uh, successful. However, what I see in your amendment as important is that you are speaking, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but you're speaking to some priorities that you think the commission should have that, um, at least as this document that'll now be public is drafted, we've left um, as, for lack of a better term, um, not a priority. So I, I do agree that some of the unfunded, uh, the priorities that'll be left unfunded are important, and to the extent uh, this amendment or any of the other amendments proposed today can do anything to, um, to help that out, in that regard, I would support it. Thank you, Commissioner Bioko. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Acting Chairman. Um, I must reluctantly vote no on this amendment out of respect for the agreed upon funding level with OMB. I agree with and I support all the underlying programs that your amendment is seeking to fund. Uh, I would be a solid yes on this amendment if it sought to identify budget neutral offsets from within the existing top line allocation. Uh, unfortunately, it does not. Uh, the budget request that we're voting on today is, as the acting chairman laid out, one step in, in a larger process. I, I, I support continued advocacy to fund these items with respect to outreach to congressional appropriators, but be, uh, because of the way that this is drafted right now and out of respect uh, for the, the negotiation process with OMB and the top line that we've mutually agreed upon, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a reluctant no on this amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Does anyone have any other questions of Commissioner Kay? Commissioner Kay, you may. May I speak? Please. Thank you. Well, the good news is I'm hearing unanimity. The bad news is the wrong kind. Uh, what I would ask my colleagues, uh, recognizing where the votes might be going, is to see how this, we'll have the vote, it will obviously go down, but see how this process plays out over the next number of months. 
And if it turns out that, unfortunately, we are not funded at a materially different level than we have been for the last number of years and the need to meet inflation and any uh, welcome staff salary increases, anything that we can't accommodate does continue to eat into our base and our ability to provide core safety work. I would ask that you would consider, as we go into the next budget cycle, us asserting our independence a little bit more and having a willingness to start in the earlier part of the process to maybe have a higher number. That would be my request. Other than that, I have no further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Uh, hearing no further discussion, uh, we will now move to vote on uh, Commissioner Kay's amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Um, I abstain from the vote. Commissioner Kay. I vote aye. Commissioner Biacco. I vote no, but let me also just say I wish I was as articulate as Commissioner Feldman because he couldn't have said it better. But I'm, I'm sorry, for this particular amendment, I would have to say no. And Commissioner Feldman. I vote no. And I vote no. The yeas are one, the nays are three, and there is one abstention. The amendment by Commissioner Kay is not adopted. Are there any other additional amendments here at the dais this morning? Uh, Madam Chair, I have a joint motion from Commissioner Kay and myself regarding uh, furniture tip over. Commissioner Adler, I will recognize you for your amendment, ask you to uh, take three minutes to describe it, uh, and at the conclusion, uh, I will ask for a second. Uh, so, uh, Commissioner Kay and I have proposed an amendment to the budget. Uh, request to Congress that would add as a project the drafting of a notice of proposed rulemaking for children's clothing storage units under Section 104 of the Consumer Product Safety Act. And let me first tell you what it isn't, and then I'll tell you what it is. We have not proposed to halt or slow work on the development of a broader rule under Section 7 and 9 of CPSA to address furniture tip-overs. We understand that this is a proposal that's limited to a subset. We think it's a substantial subset, but it's a subset of clothing storage units that prevent hazards, present hazards to children. But just because we can't protect all kids doesn't we mean we shouldn't protect as many as we can as quickly as we can. Uh, and I want to note in passing that uh, I think we're all aware that there's a piece of legislation called the Sturdy Act which if it were enacted would solve a lot of our problems because it would enable us to promulgate in a very streamlined fashion a consumer product safety rule for clothing storage units that would protect all children because it would address all clothing storage units. Um, what we propose to do is just apply the technical and engineering research that's underway already for a rule under Section 7 and 9. Uh, but this is a much, much faster and more efficient approach to doing that. And let me just note, in the 10 years that we've had Section 104, the agencies drafted roughly 20 safety standards under Section 104. In that 10-year period, we have drafted one standard on the provisions of 7 and 9. Uh, the metaphor I use or the analogy I use is this is inciting a stampede of turtles through a vat of peanut butter, uh, the pace. Uh, when you look at the differences between drafting a rule under Section 7 and 9 and drafting a rule under 104, they're just huge differences. We have well over a dozen findings and steps that we have to make in order to draft a Section 7 and 9 rule. And I got to admit, over the years of watching these rules being drafted, I have yet to see a single rule that was improved by these cumbersome procedures. And in sharp contrast, Section 104 applies the traditional common informal 553 rulemaking provisions of the Administrative Procedure Act with one additional step, consulting with outside gr groups, and one additional finding, namely that the uh, standard be more stringent uh, than a voluntary standard. Uh, and I would also note to date, with all our 20 rules, we've never had a legal challenge to any of the 104 rules. Uh, and I want to repeat what I said, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, I very much appreciated the language you used and the proposals you made at ICFASO. Uh, I would not necessarily qual quarrel with your uh, call to uh, raise the weight of for t measuring tip overs from 50 pounds to 60 pounds or lowering the height requirement to 27 inches. But there's still some issues that remain to be addressed. Uh, for example, uh, children not just hanging gently from a uh, clothing storage unit, 
but climbing up it, children pulling out multiple drawers from a clothing storage unit, and clothing storage units being placed on carpets and rugs with uneven surfaces. In other words, there are a lot of issues that remain to be addressed that I think uh, we need to do either for a 104 or a, one, uh, a Section 7 and 9 rule. Uh, regrettably, the voluntary standard process has not been moving very fast, and we've seen a fair amount of foot dragging from the industry, and I find that very sad. So I think we are at a point for decisive action. Uh, by the way, nothing would make uh, Commissioner Kay or me happier than being able to find a good drafting of a, an ASTM voluntary standard. Uh, that would allow us not to do a 104 rule and not to do a Section 7 and 9 rule, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, I know we've all met with parents of kids killed by tip-overs, and of all the meetings I've attended, many of which keep me awake at night, this one lingers even during the day. Uh, I think the parents group made such a compelling case in such a thoughtful, substantive manner uh, that I think I found it compelling, and I hope everyone else would. In closing, if we're to carry out our critical mandate to protect our most vulnerable consumers, uh, Commissioner Kay and I believe it essential that the Commission declare now our intention to use the full panoply of tools available uh, to us to meet our mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Is there a second? Second. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of Commissioner Adler's amendment. For discussion of the amendment, once again, I will recognize each commissioner in the usual seniority order, um, except for that I will call upon the amendment sponsor last. Um, <clears throat> so I will begin with myself. I, um, I don't intend to support this amendment. I, I frankly don't think this is what Congress intended when they uh, enacted Section 104, the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. I don't think they intended to allow this type of regulation. I don't agree that a clothing storage unit, such as a dresser, becomes a durable nursery product just because it is put into a child's room. Uh, and let me pause here for a minute just to say that the tip over issue is a priority of mine, and I frankly think of this agency. Uh, we are right now in the middle of some significant testing uh, that has already been outlined to address some of the very issues you speak of um, in terms of dynamic testing, the drawers, how kids climb on dressers to address some of those and answer some of those questions. I just don't think that this is the proper mechanism to get to, uh, to a solution. There's another problem, too, with, with Commissioner Adler's amendment, Commissioner Kay's amendment, that there is always already a voluntary standard that seeks to prevent tip over of clothing storage units. But it does not, and there's no specific provision in that that applies to children's addressers or even identifies any subset of products that are intended for children under age five. It is a standard of general applicability. And it would be highly artificial, to say the very least, to carve out a subset of those dressers and adopt a mandatory standard just for those dressers. Uh, and again, my opposition to Commissioner Adler and Commissioner Kay's amendment does not mean that I am unconcerned about tip over deaths and injuries, as was uh, outlined by Commissioner uh, Adler at ICFASO. I did make it a priority of mine, and I have. Um, indicated what my preference is, that we uh, direct the ASTM, the voluntary standard, to, to uh, begin and to get to 60 pounds and to end the fruitless discussion that's gone on for many months. To Commissioner Adler's point, there has been a delay. We needed to, to jumpstart that, and I believe we have. And also, uh, they will be balloting for the 27 inches and above, so that part of the standard will be changed. But this is a multifaceted approach uh, that, that one, there is not one uh, silver answer to this issue. There is not, and it will require the commission and the agency to look, take a multifaceted approach, and that will mean uh, a very uh, stringent educational campaign as well. Um, but I don't think that what Commissioner Adler and Commissioner Kay are proposing will move things along any quicker. In fact, my concern is that any distraction that would have in the current voluntary standard and trying to carve out a narrow selection of dressers designated for children would actually distract the voluntary standard participants from doing what now they have a clear direction and mandate to do, and that is to get to the 60 pounds, 
to, to look at dressers that are 27 inches and above, and beyond that, uh, what our staff is doing to, to do all of the testing that needs to be done to hopefully provide us with some answers. Uh, I've met with the parents, the Pats, we met with them at ECFASO, we've met with them in my office, and um, they have the most compelling argument to do something about this issue, and we've taken that to heart as an agency. I just unfortunately can't agree with this approach. I think it, uh, it just doesn't get to the heart of the answer, and it, it's just not the right way to go. I don't think Congress ever intended the 104s to be used that way. Commissioner Kay. I guess I would first yield to Commissioner Adler if you had something you wanted to say. I do have a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, if ever there were a situation where Congress approved of our moving ahead on a standard like this, this would be it. I've talked to uh, the parents of Danny Kaiser for whom Section 104 and the Section 104 provisions apply. The idea that we would have this artificial narrow limiting of a standard uh, it would be alien to them. And I just want to go back to what the scope of the voluntary standard, the standard that's under consideration right now, and read what it's intended to do. It's intended to reduce injuries and deaths of children from hazards associated with tip over from clothing storage units such as chests, door chests, and dressers. This is intended to cover children up and in to including age five. This is precisely the group that our amendment is addressed to. So I have little doubt that, uh, that the people who wrote Section 104, when they wrote it, the idea that we could not uh, take the provisions that are specifically designed to protect kids and use them to do a 104 rule, I think would be alien to them. Uh, and I may just add one quick thing. I don't believe we have a clear mandate, or at least I don't think, think that we are sending a clear mandate to move to 60 pounds. When I've talked to staff, they say 60 pounds is better than 50 pounds, but we're not sure that's the right test because it doesn't reflect the dynamics of children climbing up clothing storage units. I apologize. I'm we, happy to give it to the chair. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Kay. First of all, we've gone out of order because it was, as, as you two are both the sponsors of this amendment. So I think just procedurally, we probably, I should second the motion just because you probably shouldn't second your own motion, just for the record. So I will second the motion. Is that okay with you? Absolutely, however you'd like to proceed. And then uh, I will proceed to Commissioner Kay. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to join Commissioner Adler in proposing this amendment. Uh, I don't think I need to spend a lot of time on it because he covered it so well. I would uh, say that I agree that there should be a multifaceted multi approach, and if there's any issue that should call for us uh, using all the authorities that either we have or we believe we have, I think that this is one of them. Uh, it doesn't, as Commissioner Adler said, it doesn't in any way conflict with other work that we're doing. In fact, it complements it well. I do think that it would sharpen our ability to move more quickly on figuring out the core technical issues that need to be resolved, and I don't believe that it really should cause any uh, additional work or distraction in the voluntary standards body because it's our burden, as Commissioner Adler said, to consult with the voluntary standards body, and I think by the fact that there already is the standard that can qualify as consultation, so I don't think that we would need additional work, uh, certainly anything that would be particularly onerous for a 104 in the voluntary standards body, so I hope that we could, those who would be inclined not to support it would reconsider and realize that we really should be sending the message and marshalling all of our resources and figuring out anything that we can do to finally solve this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Bialko. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Adler and Kay, I think that this is a very important proposed amendment for some of the reasons that you both just raised, including um, Commissioner Adler. I, I, I too, was... Um, disturbed, I guess, um, with the acting chair's um, announcement at ICFASO. Um, she, I, I realize it's a priority of hers, and I, and I do think it should be a priority. It's a priority of mine, and it sounds like it's a priority of, of the agencies. But she did, at that time, suggest that she directed staff, but I believe that to direct the staff, we need to have some something to direct the staff 
with. And we haven't had, at least I haven't participated in, in any discussion. So I would like to see us move that forward. I too believe the voluntary standard is not working. And I don't think that this proposal was a distraction to that. I think they've been distracted for years and haven't um, really reached an answer. And I know I have some um, ideas that I have not only raised and conveyed to the staff, but um, haven't had a chance to really expand upon. So I, I do think that this is an important um, thing that we should be spending our resources on. The trouble I have with your amendment is that I can't legally get there under 104. I think that um, to try to put this under a durable good, if it's marketed for children's um, use or for use in a, children's, a child's room, is too subjective. It leaves too much room for um, uh, labeling uh, loopholes, if you will, and it does lead to several things that we would need to change, uh, as you point out, including um, the uh, CFR 1130.2, uh, which is the requirement for consumer registration of durable infant and toddler goods, so we would have to overcome that. I, I would like to see us simply direct the staff um, to move on this and develop a rule uh, that we can mandate for uh, these products to address the problem because um, the way it stands now, it doesn't appear to be uh, working. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Acting Chairman. Uh, and thank you, Commissioner Adler, for bringing this up. Uh, I do echo your diagnosis of the underlying problem, and I am very concerned about the issue of tip over. I've met with the families. I hear and understand the frustration about how long this process has taken. It is something that this agency has been grappling with uh, long before I joined this body. Um, and I, I, I echo the concerns that I'm hearing raised by you, Commissioner Adler, and, and Commissioner Bayako about the way in which the acting chairman's announcement at ICFASO was rolled out, uh, but maybe more so the, the way it's being understood and, and discussed among groups and, and, and industry. Um, it's not the agency's position to move from 50 to 60. It, it, this is not something that we voted on. Um, it's not commission capital C policy. Um, but I, I, I I, I think that there is still a lane for the, 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 the full commission here to vote and act. Um, I understand from industry and expert agency staff that simply moving forward from 50 to 60 doesn't fully answer the question in terms of uh, addressing the IDIs and the data from the field that they're seeing. Um, this, the, the, the dynamics at play with tip over incidents appear to be more complicated than the simple static hanging of a, of a weight. That test method may not adequately address the, uh, the, the, the underlying hazard that, uh, that, that we would need to solve in order to, um, in order to present a solution that, that offers real and meaningful change to protect, to protect children. Um, but I, 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 I want to move forward with a mandatory standard, um, if only to encourage discussion in the subcommittee to, uh, to, to get to a place where, where they're contemplating a, a more strenuous voluntary standard. But if not, to backstop, uh, to backstop the matter with, with a, a real and meaningful mandatory standard that I think we would be well within our rights under Section 7 uh, to address. The current voluntary standard uh, does not adequately reduce the risk of injury, and we're seeing that in an incidence. Uh, and I also question whether the, the existing voluntary standard uh, is one with which there's substantial compliance. There seems to be an awful large number of non-compliant product that we continue to see in the marketplace, and that's of great concern. Those are the two threshold questions that we as a commission would need to get at uh, in order to move forward under Section 7 of our Act, uh, and I think that that's something that uh, is worth considering. Um, I appreciate Chair, uh, uh, Chairman Adler, Commissioner Adler's uh, 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 amendment. I do not think 104 is the right route here. I question how we would go about making a determination of certain product falling within the definition of durable nursery product. Um, and to the extent that we were to pursue a Section 104 rule here, 
I think that you were only touching a narrow subset of the broader product category and not fully addressing the issue. I'm wondering whether then you are creating a perverse market incentive for furniture manufacturers to um, market product as adult product that they otherwise would, would market with all kinds of indicia that it's intended as a child's product. Um, and I question based on a review of the IDIs and incident data that exists, that of the product that we see involved in, in injuries and fatalities, how much of that would actually rise or fall within the definition of durable nursery product, I don't have a good answer for that. And, and therefore, I question whether going the 104 route is more of a solution in search of a problem. I don't know what the ultimate impact would be. But like I said, uh, I, 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 I do support moving forward and accelerating the commission's efforts with respect to a mandatory standard. That's why I have offered, along with Commissioner Biacco, uh, my Amendment 3, which would uh, do something very similar to uh, the mandatory standards table that's included in the underlying document here. Um, and, and what our amendment would do would simply be to, uh, uh, for FY 2020, contemplate moving from uh, data analysis to moving forward with a, a full NPR with respect to CSU tip overs. Um, I, I also would support uh, uh, beginning that process e even sooner than waiting for 2020, but that's what we're talking about today. Thank you. Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you very much, and I appreciate hearing the strong support from all of uh, our colleagues about the need to move forward quickly uh, and the need to move forward on a mandatory standard, uh, at least as a way of getting attention of those involved in the development of the uh, voluntary standard and sending a signal to them that, uh, that progress has not been good and that we would expect a greater progress. Uh, just a quick word about the legality of using Section 104. If you read Section 104 carefully, which I have, uh, it provides for the adoption of any voluntary consumer product safety standard for durable infant or toddler's products. In other words, these words clearly cover any voluntary standard that is for durable infant toddler products, whether or not the standard also covers products that are not durable or infant products. It requires only that they be for durable infant products, which clearly the ASTM voluntary standard is. And it never says, and there's no hint in the statute, that the voluntary standard be intended only for such products. And I worry about poison pills. I worry about uh, the development of a voluntary standard, say, for example, for infant bed rails, where somebody would then say, well, we want this to extend to include uh, infant bed rails that are used in hospitals, which is clearly outside of our jurisdiction. And then if you say, well, since it's broader than what we intend to regulate, uh, we, can't, we can't regulate. It seems to me that as long as it's clearly focused on the product that we're intending, the fact that there are additional products that we can't touch, uh, to me, shouldn't be an argument against the legality of doing it. You may, as a matter of policy, uh, disagree, but I would at least urge you to, to, to consider the legality of it. And, the only, and again, I, I appreciate the comments of my colleagues, and uh, my only further response would be that uh, it is quite accurate that we cannot protect all, but to me that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to protect those that we can and move vigorously to protect the rest uh, in due course. And again, I thank my colleagues. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Uh, is there any further discussion? May, may I respond briefly? Let us um, go, excuse me, let us go in order. Commissioner Kay? No, thank you. Commissioner Bioko? No, thank you. Commissioner Feldman? Yes, please. <laughs> Um, in, in, I appreciate Commissioner Adler's comments. Uh, in, in discussing the legality of moving forward with a designation of durable nursery products on, on a Section 104 rule, uh, I, 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 I would leave the legality of that to an Article Three judge. Um, but it, it is my view that moving forward in that direction is certainly opening the, the agency up to, to challenge. Uh, I, I, I don't have confidence that, that the agency is going to get it exactly right with respect to what falls within durable uh, nursery product. 
I think what I, I fear your amendment would be setting the agency up for is a bit of a false economy where, yes, under the expedited procedures of Section 104, uh, we could move more quickly to a volunt- to a mandatory standard, theoretically, uh, given the, the, the challenge that that route is likely to engender. Uh, I, I worry about how long the litigation process would delay us ultimately getting to a, uh, a, an enforceable mandatory standard that withstands scrutiny. Um, I also have concerns about your amendment uh, proceeding under the 104 route, taking staff resources away from pursuing uh, a mandatory rulemaking on Section 7 or 9, uh, which I think we would be on stronger grounds to proceed and which has the added benefit of being broadly applicable to the entire product line and not just a small subset of clothing storage units. So, thank you. Commissioner Adler? Uh, just to briefly respond, um, uh, first of all, uh, with respect to uh, this being a matter for an Article Three court, for, as a starting point, I think it's got to be something for the Commission to make its own legal decision, and I've noticed my colleague here is not shy about uh, offering interpretations of the law, and the Commission sits down and we decide whether or not we want to proceed with those. Uh, and it's, that is a proposition with which I'm in strong support. Uh, the second point I would make is that to the extent there's a legal challenge to a 104, I can virtually guarantee there will be a legal challenge to any Section 7 or 9 rule since we've had it for almost every one of those. So I'm not sure that gets us any, any loss. But you do raise one concern that I have, and I, and I freely uh, acknowledge that it is a, a hypothetical concern, and that is whether in drafting a 104 rule we in any way diminish what we're doing on a seven and nine rule. And so as far as I'm concerned, part of the mandate to staff ought to be do work on developing the technical requirements, the engineering requirements, and then at some point come back to us and tell us what those added resources would be if we were to do a 104 rule. But again, I, tr- I truly appreciate your comments. Is there any further discussion on Commissioner Adler and Commissioner Kay's amendment? I actually have one thing I wanted to highlight. I think it's terrific that the five of us actually agree on this point and that we want to spend our resources um, pursuing this particular matter. So I think we are at a point, uh, and I think it's an important point to highlight, that we are looking to spend, um, uh, and and why we're discussing this at at the budget point, is that we want to spend our resources. It's the procedure and how we get there, but I think it's important that we're on the same page on that. So I thank all of you for that. Is there any further discussion? Having heard no further discussion, we'll move to a vote on the amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Kay? Aye. Commissioner Bioko? Uh, no. Commissioner Feldman? No. And I vote no. Uh, the yeas are two and the nays are three. The amendment by Commissioners Adler and Kay is not adopted. Uh, Madam Chair, um, may I just ask for a, a, a matter of comity, if you will. Com- uh, Commissioner Feldman mentioned that he had a related amendment with respect to furniture tip over, and I would urge us to take that up next just as a logical uh, next step for the discussion. So uh, I will ask if there are any other amendments at the uh, dais this morning, and I will expect to hear an answer to that. I, I have an amendment. Uh, this is uh, Feldman and Biaco 3. The purpose of this amendment is to recognize expedited uh, commission promulgation of a mandatory standard to address the risk of injury and death associated with furniture tip-overs in the budget request. Uh, This amendment would do uh, something very similar to Commissioner Adler's amendment that we just considered, uh, but instead of moving to a 104 consideration of a mandatory standard, it would amend the mandatory standards table of the FY 2020 performance budget request to Congress. Um, by striking data analysis in the FY 2020 request column and inserting NPR. Is there a second? Second. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of Commissioner Feldman's and Biaco's amendment. Again, for discussion, we'll recognize the commissioners in order of seniority, and uh, commissioners may ask questions of the sponsors if they wish and may yield part of their five minutes to the sponsor for an immediate response. Otherwise, the sponsoring commissioner will have 
uh, five minutes for discussion of the amendment following the period of questions. So I want to first of all thank Commissioner Feldman and Fishner, uh, Commissioner Biaco for offering this amendment. Um, I think that addressing the serious safety hazards posed by furniture tip overs, as Commissioner Biaco just mentioned, is something we all consider a priority of this agency. Uh, I am still hopeful that the voluntary standard uh, process will bear fruit, particularly with regards to increasing the test weights to 60 pounds and expanding the scope to include units between 27 and 30 inches in height within the scope of the standard. Uh, I would like to just kind of reiterate that that's, those are an interim steps that we ta I talked about at ICFSO, not meant to be uh, the, the answer. I think the agency is spending resources and will continue to spend resources looking at uh, many angles and many aspects of this issue to, in order that we can find out what is causing these tip overs and how we can prevent these injuries and these deaths. Uh, so I want to thank them for um, uh, introducing this amendment, and I plan to support it. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you very much, and I want to uh, thank and commend uh, Commissioners Feldman and Biaco for coming up with what could be best called a Plan B, uh, which is always important. Um, and uh, I, I am comfortable with this, and I'm delighted to support it because uh, at least this way we have an expedited approach. Uh, I'll just say that nothing prevents me from monitoring this and if it looks like we're making good progress and uh, if uh, uh, Providence smiles that we see the uh, voluntary standards sector coming up with a good uh, standard that would be ideal so uh, I do uh, support this as a plan B with the uh, with the added caveat that if I don't think I see good progress, I may come back and gently remind my colleagues uh, when we get to mid-year review that there is an alternative approach. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Commissioner Kay. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to our colleagues for this amendment. I agree. I think it's an excellent plan B. Uh, we actually were on a glide path a few years ago to move toward an NPR, and for budgetary and other reasons, I think we got sidetracked. And so if this amendment were to pass, uh, this would be a positive uh, correction course back to, I think, where we were going. I do think that we should follow this up, though, through the mid-year and the operating plan process to make sure that we are really focusing on the actual technical work that needs to be done to move this forward and identifying and helping staff work to identify those the additional testing that might be necessary providing the resources to doing it so that we can continue to expedite this based on this new uh, energy that we're hoping to put behind it i will also say though that once we do identify the technical parts i think the commission has a role to play into in shaping how that npr looks because nprs can go on forever they could include provisions that in theory might seem really important and might uh, scratch an economical itch or otherwise, but I don't know that they're really necessary at the NPR stage. There's a delicate balance of putting out there for notice and comment what needs to be in there, but I don't think that we need to overdo it, and I think that we all should pay close attention and make sure that the NPR, if one is drafted, and I hope one will be, covers the bases and doesn't really have to go beyond that. And I think that that's something we all should keep monitoring. But happy to support this. I hope it passes. It sounds like it will. And I think this is a good day for uh, trying to move forward on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Bioko. Thank you. And I appreciate the support and the comments that were made. I think there are uh, lots of valid ones uh, with which I agree. I don't have anything new to say, so I'll just pass to Commissioner Feldman. Again, appreciate the support and the nice comments. I, I would move that we, we uh, proceed to a vote. Any further discussion? Hearing, having heard no further discussion, we will move to a vote on this amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Kay? Aye. Commissioner Bialco? Aye. Commissioner Feldman? Aye. And I vote yes. The uh, yeas, the ayes are five, the nays are zero, and the amendment uh, is adopted. Are there any other amendments here this morning? Madam Chair, I would like to uh, be, be uh, open discussion on Feldman and Biaco number four. This amendment uh, is a relatively simple amendment uh, to address child nicotine poison prevention 
enforcement in the underlying budget request. Uh, it would make an amendment to the uh, FY 2020 budget initiatives and activities entry of the performance budget request to insert uh, an item on the Child Nicotine Poison Prevention Act enforcement uh, to uh, outline the broad strokes of the requirements under that act and to state explicitly that the commission contemplates using a portion of the FY 2020 request allocation for uh, response to support the identification and removal of hazardous product liquid nicotine containers that do not comply with the special packaging requirements of 16 CFR 1700.15. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Is there a second? Second. We will now move to consideration of Commissioner Feldman's and Commissioner Biacco's amendment. <clears throat> um, I, and I will begin the line of questioning. I really don't have any questions or comments other than say I plan on supporting the amendment. Thanks, Mike. Thank my colleagues for offering it. Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also plan to support this, and I do want to, uh, I know it's a joint uh, motion from Commissioner Biacco and Commissioner Feldman, but Commissioner Feldman, I think you deserve special uh, recognition. You've raised this issue with the commission. You've been a vigorous advocate for enforcing this provision of the law. I think uh, this will protect kids in ways that maybe wouldn't have occurred if you hadn't come on board and done it. So uh, thank you so much for br uh, bringing this to our attention. Commissioner Kay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also plan to support it. I want to thank the both of you for your advocacy and passion on this issue. I do. I, I believe both of you have made a difference, and that will lead to safer outcomes, and I'm excited to support this amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Bielko. Thank you, and thank you for your um, comments, commissioners. I, um, I do think the agency got off to a little bit of a uh, slow start on um, this particular statute, and to the extent that additional resources or funding will help move that along, I think we should commit them, and therefore um, why I joined uh, Commissioner Feldman in proposing this amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman. I have no additional comments other than to say I, I appreciate the uh, uniformity of, of support and kind words that I'm hearing right now. I think that this is too important an issue for it to ever become divisive. I don't think it is. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that we're in a position today to vote on this, and I would move that we do so. Thank you very much. I have one um, technical change just to your amendment, and it just is the consistency of the language. But I would entertain any any uh, technical uh, uh, changes that you would like to see addressed. It's just that um, so that it would be consistent to adjust, address Child Nicotine Poisoning Prevention Act. Oh, I see, I see. And it's, that's how it's referred to under purpose. And then in the paragraph, the last paragraph, but underneath on page 13, it says child liquid nicotine. So Then if we could proceed to consideration uh, as modified. Okay. So we'll strike the word liquid, liquid out of that... Um, the phrase. Are there any objections? No objection. Thank you. Uh, hearing no further discussion, uh, we will proceed to vote. Uh, Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Kay? I vote aye on the modified amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Bielko? Aye. Commissioner Fedelman? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes are five, the nays are zero, and the um, amendment is passed by Commissioners Feldman and Biaco. Are there any other amendments at the dais this morning? Acting Chairman, I'd like to proceed to consideration of Feldman and Biaco Amendment Number Two. Excuse me. We're going to take a five-minute recess uh, since Commissioner Feld or K left.
Thank you all very much. We will now resume our hearing. Um, and I believe when we left off, Commissioner Feldman, you were about to introduce uh, another amendment. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was hoping that we could proceed to consideration of Feldman and Biaco Amendment Number 2. This amendment would include funding for agency data and informa information technology priorities in the underlying budget request. And it would do so by seeking to identify offsets that do, do not negatively impact staffing or programmatic spending that's critical to the agency's uh, mission to protect the public from unreasonable risks of injury associated with consumer products. Um, this amendment does in large part what K-1 sought to accomplish in terms of identifying items that had been uh, left in the unfunded portion, Appendix A of the underlying document, to move that to the funded document. Uh, the, the, the key difference here is that this addresses only the um, expanded data analysis and IT systems and security upgrade items uh, that were both al allocated at $2 million each and would direct staff to identify uh, offsetting amounts from within the existing budget to make sure that, uh, that, that, that this amendment gets in under the agreed upon cap. Um, I would move for consideration of this amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Is there a second? I second it. We'll now move to consideration of Commissioner Feldman's and Biaco's amendment. Um, I will begin with my line of questioning. Um, um, I think it's no, no mystery how much uh, in support I am of enhancing our data and technology support. Um, and I just want to make that very clear. Um, however, it's my understanding that the appropriate offsets that, and you're saying you don't want it to impact staffing or programming, but have those offsets been identified? It would direct staff to identify those offsets. And so this is why the, these two initiatives were included in Appendix A, um, because there was no offset to consider. So uh, unfortunately, I can't, af I can't support this amendment at this time. I, I, you know, I couldn't be any more supportive conceptually of, of technology and data and, and this agency being a data-driven agency, but the, the fact that this was included in the Appendix A and with guidance that this, and, and a clear message that this is what will not get done if we are not funded at, at the level that we originally requested. So we've done that, and now to take those monies and, and away from our mission, which sounds to me like you're being very considerate of and concerned about the, mission, the agency monies that affect the mission of the agency. So uh, unfortunately, I can't support this, but I certainly am open to discussing it and uh, further reassessing it at another time. And uh, you know, we've got mid-year coming up and an ops plan, and I hope we can um, flesh this out a little bit and talk to the appropriate staff and, and get some clarity on the issue. Commissioner Adler. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, so this is Appendix A, and uh, as our um, terrific chief financial officer reminds us that often these things do get funded because we have people who leave and the unfunded portion of their salary becomes available. We have contracts that are not let and so those funds become available. So uh, the, the kinds of things you're calling for here are certainly worthy and I share the chairman's uh, enthusiastic support for addressing these. My my problem is that as, as the chairman was saying, these are unfunded, these are contingent funds and so, for example, I see that uh, you do not include any uh, acknowledgement of the need for pay inflation and non-pay inflation. Where do those unfunded matters in Appendix A fit into your overall scheme? If you could explain that, that would be helpful. They would remain in Appendix A in the unfunded portion. Uh, it was looking at the items that had been, uh, that had been relegated to the unfunded Appendix A and looking within those, all of those items are, are, are worthy, and, and we spoke at some length uh, about the importance of, of all of the programs that are included in Appendix A when we were considering Commissioner Kay's uh, amendment earlier. 
um, taking a look at the importance of data and IT systems to the critical function of this agency that impacts our ability to uh, conduct agency business and to make informed decisions to, to faithfully execute our statutory mandate uh, led Commissioner Bayako, and I don't mean to speak for Commissioner Bayako, and I to identify the agency data and IT portions of Appendix A as higher priority than uh, than than the inflation plus ops, and and that's why we felt that those two items were were uh, appropriate for inclusion in in this particular amendment to address it as we are. And, and if I could add to that, you know, you raised some very good points, Commissioner Adler, and that is there are times, at, like at mid-year and so forth, that there are opportunities and there are there are monies that can be used to offset the budget as it's um, presented. But we cannot do that until and unless we actually ac account for this in the budget. So we can talk about it all we want at mid-year or ops plan, but what we're going to hear at that time is we don't have the funding. And I think that these two issues issues are too important not to put in some type of earmark for um, uh, these things because without a better data system and analysis or putting more people uh, in, in working on that and without a better IT structure, we're going to continue to get the same document pushed out of here every year and we're going to have less work done just like we're experiencing on the tip over. So I think this is something that the agency needs to consider. Um, this is a 2020 budget. We're sitting here in early 2019. It needs to be earmarked. It needs to be put into the budget, and we can offset it as we go along. And, and, and for that reason, I think it needs to be included. I actually think to a great extent we're singing good harmony, not necessarily complete harmony. But uh, uh, one, of the, one of the strongest arguments that the chairman has made when she's gone on the Hill is the need to have uh, greater funding for uh, pay inflation and non-pay inflation. And uh, the idea that we are going to put those at a lower priority than these very worthy projects, maybe put them at cross purposes, because unless we have the pay inflation, uh, we're not going to have the staff to do these kinds of projects. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that when we get to mid-year and we get to op plan, that we will find that we do have funding for these. But uh, to ask me to place those at a higher priority than adjusting for uh, inflation is asking me to take a, a step too far. Uh, you, you've almost persuaded me to go back and change my vote on Commissioner Kay's uh, <laughs> recommendation but, to but ask just, for this extra funding. Just so funding. we're clear, Commissioner Adler, we're not asking you to place, I'm not asking you to place a priority level one over the other, but um, this is something that I think needs to be earmarked, um, not to the exclusion of asking for money later for for inflation and so forth, but for this particular, this is the foundation of this agency, our data, our analysis, our systems, and uh, the re retail reporting system, which is um, not uh, rising to the level it should be because we don't have the staff or the ability to process that information. We need to put it in this budget. We need to account for it now so that we can move forward. Otherwise, we're going to be stagnant. And if I may reclaim some of my time to address a, a, I apologize. A, a, Procedurally, though, we're going to go the your time to respond is at the end of unless they're yielding their five minutes. I'm delighted to yield my time. Your time is up. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I'm even happier to yield. Sorry, I got a little overzealous there. <laughs> Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Feldman, please proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, it, with respect to prioritizing between inflation adjustments for inflation inflation adjustments for, for staffing and uh, in, in other items within appendix a I, I agree 100% with what Commissioner Bayako said uh, we are not we are not making a, a, a prioritization judgment here but uh, to to follow on a point that you raised Commissioner Adler uh, that that this agency begins to fall apart uh, if, if we're not able to bring staffing on board, uh, I, I would posit that this agency also begins to fall apart and and not be in, in as uh, ready a forward posture to execute on our duties uh, when our IT systems fall apart. And we are coming off a week where the agency experienced 24 hours plus of downtime of, of zero connectivity to the Internet, zero email access. Um, you know, we are here to execute the statute and work on behalf of of, of 
of uh, the American people and, and consumers and families. We cannot do our jobs without the, the, the adequate investment in baseline I, IT support. Uh, the, the data conversation is separate and apart. That is also extremely important. Uh, but but I, I would not discount the importance of, of all of the items in Appendix A. Okay, I'm going to reclaim my time if that's okay, Commissioner Adler. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I hear fantastic advocacy for my amendment. So if there's any desire to bring that back up, I'm happy to do so. Obviously on the substance, I think we all agree. It just comes down to what the actual impact of it is and why staff chose to put it in the place that they did. Uh, unless I'm missing something about our funding level, I just don't think that we have that kind of money that doesn't impact staffing or core safety needs. And I would question if we did have that kind of money, why is that in the budget and this isn't? And so I think as a practical effect, that's really why I offered my amendment earlier, because I do think this does need the funding, but we need to ask for it above the base. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to support the amendment, but I think on a going forward basis, it sounds like we're all in the same place about trying to both increase our overall numbers to the extent that we can and find funds without impacting other core safety work and staff work or staffing and raises I think they do deserve uh, to try to fund this type of activity. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Bianco. Would it make a difference on this amendment if the dollar amount was not part of this, but rather um, that there would be additional funding, out of curiosity, while we're talking. To whom are you addressing that? Ah, anybody who wants to answer. So I would, I guess I would ask, how would that look mechanically? What would you be proposing? I understood. I, I was just trying to get a, a feel for, okay, fair enough. Commissioner Feldman? I have no further Questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, do you have uh, any additional questions, Commissioner Adler, Commissioner Kay? No additional questions or comments. Thank you. And the only thing I would say, I really appreciate the attempt to try to find some way to do it. And if there's some way to figure that out, I'm game to try to do that. So would you be, uh, w would it be feasible, and I'm, I ask this to all my colleagues, um, to take the dollar amount out, but to commit to um, revisiting it at another time, whether it's during the op plan or mid-year, I, I feel very strongly that it needs to be at least accounted for in the budget. Uh, the fact that it was put in a particular spot in the budget doesn't mean it can't be put back in. We don't, we're not, I'm not proposing, and I don't, I don't mean to speak for Commissioner Feldman, but we're not proposing for uh, asking for additional funds, but rather that funds be used for these purposes. It needs to be expanded. So I, I, I think conceptually I would be open to that. I, it would just be, I would, at this moment in time where we sit here and where we are in this process, I'm struggling to figure out how that would work that would not trigger some type of spending that we, I think, are saying that is not already in there. And so I, I think if there were a way for the budget to reflect that the commission believes that these are important items, yes, I agree with that. But if it ended up, again, having a practical impact, of shifting dollars, I would have to respectfully disagree for the reasons that I articulated earlier. By the way, Elliot, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't mean to like just um, ask you that. You, I can see you the easiest, but anybody else who wants to comment, I would uh, like. Well, first of all, I, I agree completely with what uh, Commissioner Kay was saying. I think aspirational language uh, is a good thing. I have no problem with that. Uh, but at this point, it, it still seems to me to look like zero sum. and. Uh, I'm not prepared, short of uh, endorsing Commissioner Kay's amendment, to approve something, whether it's got uh, specific budget uh, numbers or not, uh, something that mandates that we move to adopt this. I think that the point you make is a, is a good one, which is when we get around to mid-year review and we get around to further refining this, I think you'll find yourselves delighted that we will see some funds for these projects, and I think you'll find fairly strong support among the commissioners for uh, adopting these approaches. Is that a vote there, Commissioner Adler, at mid-year to support this I, particular I, project? Uh, I'm just having some fun with you, you realize. Well, you're, you're perfectly free to do that. I get myself <laughs> in more trouble by uh, uh, making uh, 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 commitments that are then I, upon reflection, uh, feel I should have been more precise about. But <laughs> generally speaking, uh, 
Aspirational language, I'll just repeat, aspirational language makes a lot of sense to me, and I, I have no problem if you could come up with some aspirational language. Uh, putting in concrete uh, either budget numbers or concrete budget proposals uh, that will then take away uh, from uh, monies already allocated, that, that's where I have my, my problem. Is there any further discussion on the Commissioner Feldman Bialco amendment? Having, hearing no further discussion, we'll move to vote on the amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? No. Commissioner Kay? No. Commissioner Bialco? Yes. Commissioner Feldman? Yes. And I vote no. Uh, the yeas are two, the uh, nays are three. The amendments by Commissioner Feldman and Bialco is not adopted. Are there any other amendments here at the dais this morning? I have one more amendment, Madam Chairman. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, and, and I, I, I do want to proceed to Feldman and Bayako Amendment Number One. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is to address the workforce challenges and agency skills gaps with respect to emerging technology and uh, information technology mission support functions that are included in the budget request. In the underlying document, uh, Strategic Goal Number One uh, spells out quite explicitly uh, concerns about the workforce challenges and skills gaps that the agency has with respect to IT, understanding the data that the agency processes, um, full grasp of uh, the, the intricacies of emerging technology, be it with respect to the Internet of Things, connected devices, blockchain, e-commerce platforms. Um, therefore, the, the, the purpose of this amendment would be to, within the existing budget cap and allotment for FTEs, redirect the agency to designate two full-time equivalents to allow the agency to hire a chief technologist and a chief data officer in order to address those challenges. Um, these are not or should not be unfamiliar concepts to the agency. I'm certainly not the first commissioner to propose uh, the idea of moving towards a chief data officer here at the agency. Um, it would be my hope that we could move to uh, uh, include this amendment in the underlying document um, in order to, uh, to build that into the, the, the baseline assumption going into 2020. Uh, but I, I do recognize the concerns that I'm hearing from uh, uh, other members on the dais with respect to uh, the, 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 the need for a fully defined um, position description and, uh, and and some further discussion on where these two uh, officers would fit within the org chart. It would be my hope that plugging in a chief technologist and a chief data officer, as our sister agencies have done, uh, that, that these employees would fit uh, a stride of the various verticals within the agency and that their, uh, and that their background and expertise would inform all level of work that the agency does. Uh, so I, I hear the, the, the concerns that we've had offline, and I, I do appreciate the support that has been offered for the underlying concept here. Um, I, I, based on the conversations that I have had with the acting chairman, um, I am contemplating withdrawing this amendment in exchange for a firm commitment today to pursue uh, of the money that's available for consideration at mid-year um, uh, a, a, a commitment to fund two FTEs uh, for these two positions, and in the interim between now and then, to to continue to work collegially to uh, to, to put together some some meat on the bones with respect to the various position descriptions. Um, that puts uh, uh, me now in, in a, a bit of an awkward position as I'm I'm prepared to withdraw the amendment. It, the amendment is currently offered as a joint Feldman Bayako uh, uh, amendment, and I would defer to. Commissioner Bayako about, about how she might want to proceed. I would continue, um, I would continue with the amendment. Uh, we are looking at the budget for 2020, and I think that the two are not mutually exclusive. Um, and for all the reasons that we just discussed as to why we can't put this into the budget because we um, it's more appropriate, or I think some of the comments I heard were about um, addressing this at a different time, I think this is very important that we're not 
putting this off until mid-year to use monies that couldn't be used um, for data to be used for two FTEs that then what happens in 2020, do, do they just go away? So I, I, would, I would still go forward. I think this is an, a very important thing. Uh, the staff has, has assured me we do not need descriptions right now. We're only determining whether or not um, this is something that the budget would account for. We're not asking for additional monies, um, and I would I would still go forward myself. How's that? <laughs> so, having we've we've got Commissioner Feldman, you withdrew. Uh, did I understand that you? I'm with contemplating withdrawing the amendment, but we are in a procedurally. Um, I, I, I don't know how to proceed, and I would I would defer to. Yeah. Sure, uh, Commissioner Adler is asking for a recess. I think we should recess for ten minutes, and then when we readjourn, we'll adjourn. Five minutes. We will resume our hearing here this morning. Um, I think the first question is, what is the amendment before us? If you two have decided whether... 
I'm sorry, it's my understanding that we're still uh, considering Feldman back a one. Okay. Um, so we will proceed with our questions. You've introduced the amendment, and um, we'll go from there. Madam Chair, I think we need to second it, actually. You call for that, I'm happy to second there it. There's a second. 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 Okay, uh, we will proceed with the questions. Um, I think that uh, there's, again, it's no mystery, no surprise how um, fully I support enhancing our data and our technology and the capabilities that this agency has with regards to that. I've been an advocate of that for uh, close to the six years I've been here. Um, as I expressed to Commissioner Feldman this morning, uh, conceptually, I agree with this concept and I agree with what he, he and Commissioner Bialco are intending to do here. But it is so, it is just not ripe to, to introduce it at this point. We have no idea about job descriptions, we have no description about where these two FTEs would fit into the agency. I, I you know, I would ask, have you met with uh, Jim Rolfs and IT to understand any needs that IT has? These are ongoing discussions within the agency. We and, and we've been told specifically by staff, please do not give us this type of detail at this point. If this is something you want to include in uh, the budget, that's fine. We only need it uh, generically right now. And further, we are way down in FTEs. There is plenty of space to put them, and we will develop them during mid-year and, and during the ops plan as we go forward. So it's my understanding it's highly unusual at mid-year to uh, introduce new FTEs that I'm going to mid, defer to the Mid-year projects do not fund FDEs, the mid-year funds. So this would have to be operation, Correct. operation plan, okay. Um, so I, I just, I think that this is not ripe. I think conceptually it's an excellent idea. I, I could not, you know, but I don't think we've done our due diligence in understanding these two FDEs, again, where they would fit in, what are the offsets, and how would we move forward with, these, with this concept. So unfortunately, I, can't, uh, I cannot agree to these amendments at this point in time. So do I understand, just so for procedurally, we will have no chance then if it's not included, if these two um, uh, FTEs are not, or the concept of funding them is not included in the 2020 budget, we will never see these staff members until at the very earliest 2021, is, is that what you mean? No, that's not what I mean. What I'm, and what I said at the outset is there seems to be some confusion about the function of the operating plan the operating plan is when we look at FTEs. The operating plan is when we dig deep into the financing that the agency has received and we allocate the funds and, and we make a determination as to how we're going to spend those. That's the role of the operating plan. It is It, it does not mean that uh, because it's not in the 2020 budget that we couldn't proceed with it in the 2020 ops plan. But it wouldn't be funded until the 2021 budget. That's how staff has explained it. I think that's incorrect. Uh, I think that if 2020, it, it just is a question if the commission deems that the various FTEs would not be funded and these two positions would be funded, and there was a, an agreement among the commissioners that this is how we wanted to proceed in our 2020 ops plan, then we're good to go. This is 2020 money, this is the 2020 budget we're talking about, and we still have to do the 2020 ops plan, which is the appropriate venue to talk about FTEs as well as the detail of how the money is going to be spent within the agency. If I may, um, this, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what the state of play is with respect to the conversation that we had earlier. It was my understanding that we were contemplating uh, a, 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 an understanding and a, an agreement to uh, postpone consideration of of uh, Feldman Bayako won at this time in exchange for an agreement from you, Acting Chairman, to uh, pursue funding for the FTEs during mid-year consideration. What I'm hearing now is that mid-year consideration is not even an appropriate place to consider FTEs. Therefore, I I'm not sure on what basis we entered into an agreement initially, and I question whether that, that, that agreement still stands. Well, let's let's be real clear. We did not have an agreement. We did not have an agreement. 
and there was no n there was no meeting of the minds in our conversation this morning. The other issue we have is is that there are two people who sponsored this amendment, and you are you may or may not withdraw, but the amendment still stands, so the amendment is still there. Um, and so, Mary has and our executive director has advised that it's unusual, if not impossible, for FTEs. But my concern to you and my conversation with you this morning was. This is not, we do not have the detail to which I don't even know what I would be agreeing to. And I did talk to you about an RFI or possibly a study that would allow us to understand where are gaps in data, where are gaps in IT, rather than just saying here are the two FTEs that we need. But rather than let's take an organized, thoughtful approach before we just say we need two FTEs. And that was, that was the Respectfully, discussion. Respectfully, this morning we discussed funding for FTEs at mid-year in exchange for withdrawing this amendment. If that's no longer a viable option, it would seem that the agreement's vitiated, and I, I would then move for a, uh, a, 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 a move to a, a, a immediate consideration of, of Feldman and Bayako 1. I would also note that um, the Foundations for Evidence-Based Policy Act now puts all CFO If agencies I could reclaim my time, I apologize. This is We've seconded the amendment. This is my time to ask questions. My time has expired. It's now Commissioner Adler's. Each commissioner has five minutes. At the end of that, you can respond. But I just want to make it real clear there was no agreement this morning. Commissioner Adler. Um, well, one of the fascinating things about being a commissioner who's been confirmed is watching the confirmation hearings of those who have not yet been confirmed. And I was fascinated to watch the confirmations of both of you. And Commissioner Feldman, I was particularly uh, caught by the emphasis you put on the need for improving data and data collection and data analysis. And I found those, those points, first of all, articulately presented and uh, uh, very persuasive. Uh, my problem here is not whether we can uh, put in an amendment like this now in the budget or at any point. I think you can put in any amendment uh, that we want at any point. What I would do is if you've made the case and you want to put it on the agenda, the way I would craft it is to say the commission hereby approves this subject to the next point when we can add FTEs to whatever the commission's operating plan is. But I think you can bring it up at any time. I think it's perfectly appropriate to bring it up now. My problem, therefore, is not the procedural one. My problem is more substantive. Uh, and this is why I uh, would urge both of you to consider withdrawing it. And uh, and it's not so much the, the appropriate time, but is with the appropriate analysis and documentation. You'll notice that when I've put uh, proposals before the commission, I've always prefaced that by sharing an extensive memo uh, setting forth my reasons for wanting to do that. What's lacking here is any sort of analysis or documentation about the specific need here, because it may be, for example, that if you came in and you laid out the needs that we have, I might say, well, let's uh, have Jim Rolfe's job expanded or modified. I don't know that we need to add an additional position as opposed to expanding the current assignment of uh, one of our existing staff people. In other words, I remain to be persuaded about the specific merits of this. I am completely persuaded by the general principle you conveyed, and I, again, I appreciate that. So just a plea, I would urge the two of you to withdraw this until uh, at some later point you're able to submit sufficient documentation to persuade me. Commissioner Kay. Commissioner Feldman, did you need time now, or did you want to wait? Because I'm happy to yield if you yeah, felt I apologize. You I meant to yield time to you. I, 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 would, I would yield to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate the amendment that both of you are offering. As you mentioned, Commissioner Feldman, there has been work prior to this to consider these positions. I think that they're warranted positions to consider. Ideally, of course, we would have more information upon which to base this decision. But for me, I think it came down to funding. And I would have been comfortable adding it to the budget if it had been above our base. And so if that's something you're willing to reconsider, then you can count me in. If not, then I'll have to part ways with you just at this particular moment, but hopefully we'll come right back together. And to the extent that your office does uh, seek additional assistance or input from my office in terms of how you want to move forward and what additional information you may want to come up with or questions you might want to ask, uh, please uh, consider us available at, at your discretion. Thank you. Um, 
Just to be clear, um, at least I do not believe, nor was this amendment intended to be um, uh, to su su suggest we needed a study or anything else that will just further delay what we all know we need here. Uh, this is not something that hasn't been discussed before. Yes, Commissioner Adler, I have seen your memos usually at the point when we're ready to vote on how those positions will be um, uh, used and, and the duties and so forth. We're not at that point. We are under strategic goal number one, and we're simply asking that the workforce include um, the, the positions for these two types of people, which we do not have and we have um, a great need for. Uh, if the objections are we, we don't know what we need, I find that even more uh, reason to make sure that it is earmarked to use for our data systems. And again, I find it remarkable that the objections uh, that we're hearing particularly from our acting chair is that she doesn't know what we would do with these people or how they would work towards data that she is, a uh, data system that she has supported for six years. So uh, I, I, I respectfully disagree with the comments, um, but I appreciate them. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you. Um, I had a question that I was hoping to direct to the general counsel, if that's if that's uh, with, within the... I think it depends on your question in terms of the response. But My also. question is with respect to the requirements of the Foundations for Evidence-Based Policymaking Act. Are you familiar with that statute? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay, and, and, and my next question then would be uh, whether or not, as I understand that statute, uh, uh, requires all CFO agencies to have a chief data officer on board. Is that accurate? Commissioner Feldman, um, I would respectfully request that any legal questions that you have concerning interpretations of specific statutes be not in a public meeting. Um, I'm certainly happy to uh, respond to your question but not in a public meeting. I appreciate that. Um, well, as I understand it, there is a statute that exists on the books that puts a clear statutory directive for CFO agencies like CPSC to have a chief data officer, which I understand we do not have on staff at this time. Is, is that correct? That's we, we have a chief information officer. Uh, and, you know, without getting into the legalities of interpretation of the statute and what our employees are and how they're classified. I don't think we should be responding to that in a public meeting. Okay. Well, it, 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 it would be my understanding that moving forward with, with uh, Feldman 1 and, and Baca 1 would be in, in support of fulfilling our statutory obligation under this statute. Uh, my next question goes back to the previous discussion with respect to the appropriate place to consider FTE allocations, um, and it, 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 the record now seems to support that pursuing those types of, of allocation decisions don't, uh, th th that doing that at mid-year is not the appropriate place. Is, is the appropriate place to address FTE, is an appropriate place to address FTE allocations during consideration of a budget? I would argue that the appropriate time is the operating plan. And how does it get funded? We have to vote on the next budget to fund that? The, the 2020 ops plan will take the 2020 money that's been allocated to this agency. So we, we right now we are talking about how much money this agency will get financed to us. Then the operating plan takes that money, whatever that amount is, and it will allocate it in a spending plan in the operating budget, the operating plan. Um, um, may I have a little second of your time to respond? I think it's uh, totally appropriate to bring it up. That's not my objection. My objection is that I need some underlying support and documentation. Uh, but I do think especially uh, because we have so few points, inflection points where we can have amendments adopted that we should be able to take advantage of those. So I think it's appropriate. It's just uh, not not a, uh, it's premature, and I agree with the chairman about that. 
reclaiming my time. I, I appreciate that. I would reiterate the statement that I made earlier that the uh, concept and roles of a chief technologist and chief data officer are not unfamiliar to this agency or this body. Uh, it, these, are, these are positions that uh, our sister agencies have moved to fill uh, if, among other reasons, to, to make good on their statutory obligations under the Foundations for Evidence-Based Policymaking Act. Um, but uh, understanding, Commissioner Adler, that, uh, that, that consideration of the budget request is, in fact, an appropriate place to consider uh, a, a arrangement and allocation of FTEs, I would then move for consideration and, and the yeas and nays on, on the underlying amendment. Is there any other discussion on Commissioner Bioko, Commissioner Feldman amendment? Having heard no further discussion, we will now call a vote on their amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? No. Commissioner Kay? No. Commissioner Bioko? Yes. Commissioner Feldman? Yes. And I vote no. The yeas are two, the nays are three. The amendment by Commissioner Feldman and Bioko has not been adopted. Are there any other amendments from the dais this morning? So having heard no further amendments or motions, we will now turn to consideration for the fiscal 2020 budget request to Congress as amended here this morning. Each commissioner will have up to 10 minutes for closing remarks after the conclusion of all of our votes. But at this point, does anyone else wish to be heard for discussion before we vote on the budget as amended? I do not have any comments. Commissioner Adler? Uh, no further comments. Commissioner Kay? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bianco? No, thank you. Mr. Feldman? No. Having heard no further comments, I will now call the vote. Again, this is to adopt the 2020 budget request to Congress as amended by the commission here this morning. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Kay? No. Commissioner Bianco? No. Commissioner Feldman? No. And I vote yes. The uh, ayes are two, the nays are three. The budget uh, will not be uh, um, adopted as amended here this morning. We will now have uh, up to 10 minutes to per commissioner for any closing remarks. And I will ask Commissioner Adler begin. I will reserve my time for closing. I don't have a lot of comments. Uh, I, I am somewhat saddened that, uh, that we were not able to get, uh, even if people's amendments are not adopted, uh, support for the, uh, uh, the budget overall. This is the kind of thing, uh, Madam Chairman, that I think sends a signal to the world that uh, is a bit distressing. I certainly understand the strong feelings of my colleagues, but uh, this is one of those points where we're it up to me. I would say we all have to learn to compromise in favor of a, a broader approach. Uh, so I look forward to whatever the next next step is. I did want to make one comment on the general tenor of the meeting today, which, as far as I'm concerned, was uh, almost a model for when people have strong and conflicting uh, views and values, and yet uh, I thought we were all on excellent behavior. Uh, in the face of some really strong disagreements. I want to commend all of my colleagues for uh, expressions of thoughtfulness and uh, limiting remarks to substantive points. Uh, this, this really, to me, is a model for how a collegial body ought to operate. And so, again, I want to commend all of my colleagues. I have no further comments. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Commissioner Kay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to uh, not give a statement now and just uh, publish a written statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Biaco. Um, I do not waive my um, opportunity to issue a written statement, but I do want to uh, say a couple things. One is I do believe uh, and agree that the vote here is distressing, um, but what it signals to me is that um, the uh, agency is intent on keeping, uh, keep doing the same thing they've been doing for years upon years upon years, which could be, and I'm speculating, but it could be why we're not seeing increases in our funding because we're not doing anything new. I think that it is important that we, um, if we're an agency 
and we truly need and support increased data analysis, increased voluntary standards and mandatory standards and enforcement and all the things that we are charged with under the statute, if we truly support those things, we will make sure they are funded because without funding and without earmarking funding for those things, we will be exactly the same as we were last year and exactly the same as we will be next year. And so I, I, I can't vote on the budget without earmarking some of those funds for moving this agency forward. And therefore, that is why I voted no. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you. Um, I, I would echo the, the everything that's been raised in, in closing statements right here about uh, the distress that we weren't able to get to yes today. Uh, I would note that the deadline to get the budget to OMB is Monday. That gives us uh, a, a good number of time plus a weekend to continue work, and I hope that we will, uh, to, to ultimately get to yes on this uh, on the underlying budget. Um, I would, would note that the, the document that was put before us today was one in which uh, none of us on the dais really had a meaningful opportunity to contribute to, uh, which is why I was glad that we were able to, in open session, pursue uh, amendments, which is something that we don't normally have, but uh, as, as members of this body and, and as, as participants in a collegial body, I think it's important that we all have an opportunity to put our, our, our stamp and, and shape the underlying document uh, within, the, uh, within the agreed upon overall spending limit with, with, uh, with, with, with OMB. Uh, I, I, I don't waive my uh, right to to issue a, a written statement at, at some point in the future, but uh, it, it's my hope that that we, we're going to continue to work to, to ultimately get the yes on this. And I yield the balance of my time. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of my colleagues. Um, I just want to begin by thanking staff. Um, Jay and James and the Office of OEX spend an inordinate amount of time um, trying to brief and prep the commission offices, and thank you for that. Thank you for preparing the budget back in September, where I feel that there was uh, not Commissioner Feldman, he wasn't here, but the rest of us had input on that budget. Um, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to talk and, and issue all of my comments here. Uh, some of them had to do with, with the fact that I was hopeful that we would reach agreement and pass a budget, but we did not do that this morning, so well, you'll have to stay tuned for that. Um, I do want to just say one thing, and that is that uh, I have a great amount of appreciation and a great amount of respect for the staff and their expertise and the way they lead this agency. And on some occasions, not all, but some, I defer to them and their expertise. Uh, I defer to them to tell me what, what is needed, and I do have an idea of what where the gaps are and what we need to pursue in this agency. However, I think we can be far more effective if we work with staff and not against staff. And, and that's where I, th I feel that there is a bit of a rift here, and I feel that staff does a fine job, and I think that uh, some of my colleagues would agree with that, but uh, I think we have a, an outstanding staff here at the CPSC. And they are committed to safety, and they are committed to helping us accomplish our mission of safety. And so for that, I greatly appreciate that, and I, I want to say thank you publicly to them for the work they do. And um, I hope that we can reach an agreement on this 2020 budget. Uh, we may or we may not get there, but I think we, uh, as, as Commissioner Adler said this morning, I think we've had a good, robust discussion here at the dais. And I appreciate my colleagues for their thoughts, for their willingness to discuss and debate. And hopefully we'll get to a, a good conclusion uh, and get this budget to OMB uh, as uh, we are required to do uh, by Monday, the 18th of March, 2019. With that, we will adjourn this meeting.